I'm Cooley, and welcome to my first tutorial video. In this video, I'll go over the basic steps that new users should take to prepare their files for transfer to the Funky S, set up their device for the first time, and navigate between games and system menus. For links to the pages that I visit and mention throughout the video, as well as additional images and notes, consult the annotated version of this video script that I've linked to in the video description. I will also include the pages linked directly in the video description for those who'd like to follow along. I'll begin this tutorial by introducing the Funky Wiki. Created by myself soon after the end of the Funky S Kickstarter campaign, it contains several pages of useful Funky S related information. I'll only be going over the essential pages of the wiki in this video. I'd suggest reading through the information available on the wiki afterwards to find answers to any questions you may have. The main page of the wiki, in addition to being the center for site navigation and listing the most recent Funky S news, contains an extensive FAQ section, answering questions such as which systems can the Funky S emulate and which games are included on the Funky S. To navigate to a specific answer, I would recommend using the wiki's Knowledge Center page, accessible via the third tab on the top of the main page. The Knowledge Center serves as an index for questions that the wiki seeks to answer, as well as listing tutorials present on the f official Funky Project documentation page. In addition to the tutorials linked to in the Knowledge Center, which can also be found in the User's Manual section of the documentation, this documentation page also lists developer resources, product information, and a link to printable 3D model files of the device's shell components. Returning to the Funky Wiki's main page, I'll now cover the first step that users should follow in the process of setting up their Funky S system, whether or not they have yet received it. As the Funky S is, first and foremost, an emulation handheld, it's important to have one's preferred games on the device present and available for when they are wanted. As the Funky S only comes with 61 homebrew games for a variety of its emulation systems, users wishing to play additional games must prepare their own collection of games to add to the device. As a guide for which games can be emulated on the Funky AS, as of April 2021, the Funky S can officially emulate the Nintendo Entertainment System, the Sega Master System, the TurboGrafx-16 and PC Engine, the Sega Genesis and Sega Mega Drive, the Game Boy, Atari Lynx, Game Gear, Super Nintendo Entertainment System, PlayStation, Game Boy Color, Neo Geo Pocket and Neo Geo Pocket Color, WonderSwan and WonderSwan Color, and the Game Boy Advance. While emulation of console add-ons has not yet been fully implemented, some Sega 32X games can be played by default by adding them to individual zip archives, while Sega CD and TurboGrafx CD games can be played by adding the respective system add-on BIOS files to specific file locations on the Funky S and enabling additional emulator file extensions via a third-party OPK program that has been released for the Funky S. Specific instructions for doing this can be found in this, in this subsection of the, wiki, of the Funky Wiki's FAQ section. While the implementation of additional emulated systems is planned for future updates to the Funky S firmware, additional systems can currently be emulated via the use of third-party natively running OPK programs. Third-party OPK programs, which include not only emulators, but also games such as Doom and applications such as the mPlayer video player, can be downloaded on this page of the Funky Wiki. Additional systems that gain full or partial compatibility via the use of such third-party emulators listed here include the Virtual Boy, Pico 8, PCFX, Atari 2600, and various arcade systems via MAME and Final Burn Alpha. Instructions on how to install and locate these programs on the Funky S will be discussed later in the video. Returning once more to the main page of the Funky Wiki, I hope that this overview of systems that are emulatable on the Funky S has given you an idea of which games you might want to include on your device. If you're still wondering where to find games, the following page of the Funky Wiki may assist you with that as well. While I can't link to illegal game download websites on the Funky Wiki, I have been able to compile game lists that amount to over 1,300 illegally accessible games. Scrolling down to the bottom of this page, you'll see three buttons. One for freeware games, one for commercial games, and one for utilities. 
With nearly a thousand games listed, the Funky Wiki's freeware games list is its most extensive. Meticulously organized according to various criteria to only include finalized freeware games and not demos or beta releases, the Wiki's freeware list is a great resource for those looking to legally add games to their collection at no cost. Up next is the commercial games list, which documents hundreds of games that can be legally purchased from platforms such as Steam and Ish.io for use on the Funky S. While the method of accessing the data file for each commercial game depends on where and from whom it was obtained, the Wiki's commercial game list is organized to clearly separate games by release type and availability. Finally, the Utilities page is the shortest of these lists, yet has several helpful emulatable programs such as public domain ebooks, calculators, and emulators for the emulated systems on the Funky S. Returning yet again to the main page, you should now have an idea of a few places you can legally acquire emulatable software for the Funky S. While games for different platforms will generally have different file extensions, such as the Nintendo Entertainment System game Urban Champion, having the file name urbanchampion.nes, and the Game Boy Advance game Pokemon Emerald, having the file name pokemonemerald.gba, most games will have all their data contained in one of these ROM files that can be transferred to and accessed on the Funky S to play that game. The, extension to this, the exception to this rule are the CD-based platforms, the PlayStation, and the partially compatible Sega CD and TurboGrafx CD system add-ons. The game ROMs for these platforms generally come in two pieces, a bin file and a queue file, with the former containing the actual game data and the latter sometimes containing metadata that lets the game know where music data is located in the game files. While only one of these files will actually appear in the game list of the Funky S, there are various methods of file management that can be used to employ that can be employed to reduce file clutter. If a queue file is opened in a notepad program and only has three lines of text, it can be safely deleted without affecting its associated game. If it has more than three lines of text, it should be kept to ensure that the game functions as intended. If you'd like to combine the files of one of your PlayStation ROMs, whether it be multiple bin files for one game or simply a bin file and an essential queue file, these sections these subsections near the bottom of the Funky Wiki's FAQ section list how to do so. Before continuing on to the file organization of the Funky S, some users may be wondering how they should prepare and organize box art images for the games they intend to put onto their system. For the Funky S to associate a box art image with the game it's for, it must share the exact same file name as the game ROMs as the game's ROM and be in either a PNG or JPEG format. For example, the boxer image file for golf.nes could either be golf.png or golf.jpg. While there is no set limit on the resolution a boxer image can be, it is highly recommended that all boxer images be resized to around the 240 pixel maximum resolution of the Funky S to ensure that they load as quickly as possible as the device otherwise would have to do so on the fly. Alternatively, should you prefer to download pre-prepared box art images for your games, I've set up a database that contains resized box art for the Nintendo Entertainment System, TurboGrafx-16, Sega Genesis, Game Boy, Super Nintendo Entertainment System, PlayStation, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance. If you choose to download box art images from the database, however, be sure that the name of each box art file matches the file name of the corresponding game's ROM file. As we wrap up this tour of the Funky Wiki, you should now have an understanding of how to legally acquire and manage game ROMs, as well as how to format box art images for your ROMs. Before we leave the Wiki and continue on to the next step, I suggest that you gather the ROM and box art files of the games that you intend to put onto your Funky S. They should be categorized into folders by which system they are for, with the Game Boy and Game Boy Color each getting their own folder, but the Wonderswan and Neo Geo Pocket systems each sharing folders with their colorized counterparts. You may pause here and continue on when you are ready.
Here is an example file system that I've created to demonstrate how files should be organized in preparation for the funky S. While the device's actual file system has more folders than this, following this guide can help you effectively organize your files until your funky S arrives. Whether or not you organize your game, library, your game library by system as I had recommended previously, your games and boxer images should now be organized in a folder layout that matches this one. Also listed here are applications, native games, and emulators of the Funky S, in which you should place any third party Funky S OPKs that you have downloaded for your system. Assuming that you now have this general file layout prepared, I'll now move on to discuss BIOS files. A BIOS file is a ROM file that a system uses to perform essential functions. In the case of the Funky S, the Game Boy Advance and PlayStation emulators need BIOS files from original hardware to emulate games for the systems accurately. As these BIOS files, just like game ROMs, are copyrighted, I cannot link to any websites where such files can be downloaded, but I can say that the Game Boy Advance BIOS file should be named GBA underscore BIOS.bin, while the PlayStation BIOS file should be named SCPH1001.bin. Assuming that you now have these files on your computer, place the Game Boy Advance BIOS file directly into the Game Boy Advance folder, and create a new folder within the PlayStation folder. called BIOS, and place the PlayStation BIOS file in the new BIOS folder. Should you need a written step-by-step -step tutorial on how to set up these BIOS file, one is available on the official Funky Project documentation page. Before continuing, it is essential that you check two things. Firstly, ensure once more that your folder structure exactly matches the example one that I've created here, including the letter casing. If any folder in this example structure, file structure other than the Game Boy Advance or PlayStation 1 folders that contain BIOS files are empty, however, you may now delete them, such as the Wonders 1 folder listed here. As they don't contain any files that will need to be transferred to the Funky S. Secondly, ensure that all the files within your file structure up to less than 27.8 gigabytes, the amount of file space available for use on the Funky S. Yes. Assuming that you're using Windows and that the folders you created are in their own directory, this can be done by holding down the Shift key, left-clicking the first and last of the folders, letting go of the Shift key, right-clicking on any of the selected folders, and selecting the Properties option from the drop-down menu. The number next to Size is the storage space that the files take up, while the number next to Size on Disk is the storage space that the file system must allocate to store these files. While the difference between these two figures will be less than the Funky S fit on Windows, as long as the Size on Disk figure is less than or equal to 27.8 gigabytes you'll be able to fit all of your files onto the Funky S. If your files add up to more than 27.8 gigabytes, likely due to having a significant number of CD-based games in your game library, you may need, you may need to purchase a, a micro SD card with a higher capacity or remove CD-based games from your game library until the total file size falls below 27.8 gigabytes. Should you choose to go the route of upgrading your device's microSD card, it is recommended that you get a U-free rated card with a capacity of 64 or 128 gigabytes. Instructions on how to upgrade your microSD card of your Funky S can be found on the official Funky Project documentation page. Now that you have your files organized and ready to go, now's the hard part, waiting for your device to arrive. Should you need to pause the video and resume when you have your funky S, I will leave a timestamp in the video description that you can resume from.
Assuming that you now have received, unboxed, charged, and opened your Funky S, it's now time to connect it to your computer for configuration. To do this, plug it into a Linux, Mac OS, or Windows computer using the included micro USB to USB A cable. Press the menu button on the Funky S, press the down button twice, and press the A button twice to confirm that you want to mount the Funky S to your computer to allow the transfer of files. Leaving the Funky S open, navigate to the device's file system on your computer, on which it will likely be identified as a USB device. Selecting this drive will let you view the device's file system, which will have the same file structure as the example I demonstrated earlier, plus several additional folders. If you open the Atari Lynx, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Game Gear, Neo Geo Pocket, NES, PC Turbo Graphics, Sega Genesis, Sega Master System, or SNES folder, you'll find several of the 61 homebrew games that come preloaded on, on the Funky S. As these games were carefully chosen from the Funky Wiki's list of freeware games based on their quality, I'd recommend keeping them on your device if you had trouble finding games for your game library up until this point. Should you wish to remove any or all of them, however, simply delete the ROM and Game Boy and the ROM and game box art files for each game that you wish to remove from your device. As your Funky S was likely manufactured several weeks before you received it, it's possible that its firmware is not fully up to date. While Funky S firmware updates are optional, I recommend checking to see if a new version is available anyway, as each update usually brings several helpful new features and capabilities. To check when the latest version of Funky OS was released, visit the Funky US release section of the Funky Team's GitHub page. The most recent version of Funky US is listed at the top of this page, along with the date it was released. If this date is less than a month before you receive your Funky S, your device's firmware may be outdated. Should you, ch should you wish to update your device's firmware to the latest version, download the file listed below the, f the latest firmware release that has the FWU file extension. As of the recording of this video, the latest firmware version is Funky OS 2.1.0 with the respective firmware update file having the file name Funky RootFS 2.1.0.fwu. Once the file finishes Once the file finishes downloading, it should be moved to the root directory of the Funky S. The same directory that contains the folders for each emulated system game library. Once the file finishes transferring to the Funky S, unmount but do not unplug the Funky S from your computer. On Windows, this can be done by right-clicking the drive label assigned to the Funky S on the left side of the file explorer and selecting the eject option from the drop down menu. Once the Funky S is ejected from your computer, press the A button twice on the device to complete the ejection process, but keep it plugged into your computer for the time being. When the ejection process finishes, the Funky S will automatically detect and apply the firmware update file, which ends with the device automatically rebooting. Should you need a written step-by-step -step tutorial on how to update the Funky S firmware, one is available on the official Funky Project documentation page. Whether or not you decide to update your device to the latest firmware version, you should now remount your Funky S to your computer, which, assuming you have your Funky S plugged in, simply press the menu button, press down twice, press A twice, and your Funky S will be mounted again. It's now time to transfer your program files to the Funky S, which, if organized according to the structure I demonstrated earlier in the video, will be quite simple. Go to the directory on your computer that has the Funky S folders that you initially prepared. First, select and copy all of them, which on Windows can be done by holding down the shift key, left clicking the first and last folders in this list, letting go of the shift key, 
right-clicking one of the folders and selecting Copy from the drop-down menu. Next, go to the root directory of the Funky S, which has all the device's emulated system game library folders. Paste your copied folders into this directory and your files will be automatically sorted into the correct folders on the device. If the total file size of your folders is significant, you can lessen the transfer time by taking the microSD card out of the device as described in the previously mentioned firmware upgrade tutorial and transfer files to it directly. Though for simplicity's sake, I would suggest continuing with the USB transfer if you have the time to spare. At no point during the transfer should you close, turn off, or unplug either your computer or Funky S, as improperly unmounting the Funky S could negatively affect its file system. When all files have been successfully transferred to the Funky S, you may unmount the, de the device by right-clicking its drive label in File Explorer and selecting Eject from the drop-down menu. Before finally unplugging the device, complete the ejection process by pressing the A button twice on the Funky S, which will once again say Mount USB when it is fully unmounted. Should you need to end the transfer early for any reason, you may do so by canceling the file transfer via the computer and undermounting the device as previously described. Assuming that you now have your files on the Funky S, your device is now fully set up and ready to go. If you'd like to watch a basic tour of the user interface and functionality of the Funky S, continue watching as the video transitions to a recording of my own Funky S. Continuing on from where my system setup tutorial ended, you can now press the menu button again to close the system menu. The Funky S has two pro program launchers that enable the user to navigate the Funky S file system to select the game they wish to play. This launcher, Retro, Retro FE, is the default launcher for all new devices. Being the simpler of the two launchers, Retro FE allows users to easily and seamlessly navigate between emulated systems and games. The other launcher, Gmenu 2X, is more complex yet more versatile allowing users to launch additional third-party emulators and applications. As both launchers are always installed and accessible on the device, you may switch between them at any time. For the purposes of this tutorial, I will begin with an ex explanation of RetroFE before continuing on to Gmenu 2X. In RetroFE, you can navigate between systems and games successively using left and right, or alphabetically using the L and R trigger buttons. selecting a specific, a specific game or system using the A button. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'll select the Game Boy Advance game George Revenge plus Pong plus Asteroids. As you can see, each game on the Funky S defaults to a stretch aspect ratio to make the most of the small screen. While the default aspect ratio can be set on a per console basis via configuration files in the file system, to change the default aspect ratio for a specific game, simply press the menu button and navigate to the aspect ratio option. Cropped maintains the original aspect ratio, yet crops the edges to fill the entire screen. Scaled maintains the original aspect ratio while adding black bars to the top and bottom of the screen to avoid cropping, while zoomed is a configurable setting that, comp that compromises between the cropped and scaled aspect ratios. Other settings that can be adjusted via the system menu are save states, brightness, and volume. Aside from save states, all these settings can also be adjusted on the fly via the function button buttons, button combinations, such as function plus down to switch the current aspect ratio. Via the function button, you can also take screenshots via the function plus up button combination. With these screenshots being stored in the snapshots folder located within the funky folder of the funky S file system. 
Aside from in-game save and emulator save states, your game state will also be automatically saved by the device whenever you close the device, the device runs out of power, or you exit the game. To load this automatic save, simply select the resume save option when loading the next game next. Unless you already have in-game save data or a manual save state, do not select the new game option, as doing so will overwrite the device's automatic save state with the data from your new game session. Returning to the main menu of RetroFE, there is one more thing to go over before continuing on to G-Menu to 2X. If you press the menu button and navigate between the different options, you will find a set theme option. This allows you to adjust the theming of RetroFE between four default choices, with additional customization options expected to be implemented in a future update to Funky OS. Staying on the system menu, navigate to the Set Launcher G-Mini 2X option and press the A button twice. When G-Mini 2X loads, you'll be in the Emulators section where the same list of consoles that was present in the RetroFP Launcher will be listed here. As these are the same applications, just presented in a different launcher, once the game is loaded, the functionality will be the same as RetroFE. Returning to the G-Menu 2X main menu, pressing the L and R buttons allows you to switch to the other tabs of the launcher, games for natively running OPK games that you have added to the device, settings for G-Menu 2X config... settings for G-Menu 2X configuration settings, and applications for natively running OPK applications with the Explorer and Commander File Viewer manager applications included by default. In the settings section, the wallpaper and skin applications allow you to further customize G the Gmenu 2X launcher to your liking. Well, Gmenu X while Gmini 2X has four skins included with it by default, additional ones can be downloaded from the list of third-party launcher themes page of the Funky Wiki. Returning to RetroFE via the file via the file via the system menu, I'll end my Funky OS setup and use a tutorial here. Hopefully, you now know how to build your game library and configure and use the Funky S. If you have any questions that weren't answered in this video, consult the Funky Wiki, Funky Community Discord server, Funky Project Documentation, or leave a comment below. If you found this tutorial helpful and informative, leave a like and let me know if there's anything else that you'd like me to release a tutorial for. Thanks for watching.